I'm happy and honored to be here. Thank you, Horisan, and uh, thank you all. Let's get started. Um, I chose this Bible verse based on meeting with True Mother in August in Korea, and she emphasized that, she said, in the Muslim world, the concept only begotten daughter is really more acceptable. And she said, why is it that we can't realize we need mothers? We can't live or exist without them. So I decided to choose this topic, and I've been working on it. It's been in my mind for a while, and I wanted to be able to share with you, so I thought this is the time to put it together. Two trees in the garden. And the tree of life, as we know from Father's teaching, represents a perfected Adam. We know that. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we know, represents a perfected Eve. When I joined this movement in 1975, they told me that this tree of knowledge represents imperfected Eve because it's good and evil. And if Eve becomes perfected, she would be only good. Not true. Knowledge is knowledge. Knowledge of evil is not evil. And knowledge of good is not good. You've got to do something. And if you know what is good, automatically you know what is evil. They're opposites. So this, when we look at the divine principle, the tree of knowledge of good and evil stands beside the tree of life. Was this tree which, by fulfilling its good purpose, represents the ideal woman, the perfected Eve. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil represents perfected Eve, not Eve growing to maturity. So two trees in the garden. Right now we can begin to see something quite important and it's very simple. They stand side by side and they are in the center of the garden. So this means we have used terminology. When I was studying at UTS, we struggled with the translation. Dr. Wilson was making the most current exposition of divine principle translation. And the quandary that we had was this term subject object. You know, and if we label man subject and woman as object, then we got all kinds of resistance when we taught the principle, you know, in the culture, unnecessarily so, correctly so. And then it was Michael Balcom, who was a UTS student at that time, came up with the idea, the phrase that we currently use, subject partner, object partner. And that is very good, but in my mind it doesn't go far enough. Because subject partner, object, and we know that the subject partner and object partner can change positions. It's like, I talk, you listen. You talk, I listen. I talk, you talk, we talk. And so we can exchange positions. But I think in this context, it's something even more than just a partnership in terms that they exchange. I keep hitting this mic. In some areas, true father is the subject position. Absolutely. In some areas, true mother is the subject position. This is a little bit different, but this is... To say that perfected Adam is the absolute subject partner all the time because he was created first is flawed logic. Another way to say that Adam was created first is to say that Eve was created last. Now you tell me, is your iPhone 13 higher upgrade than your iPhone 12? Uh-oh. <laughs> and when you get software upgrades, the latest is the greatest, right? Scientific breakthroughs are based on previous accomplishments. So if we say Eve was the last, we can also say there's something more that God added after creating Adam. And my wife and I struggled with infertility after we were blessed for about 10 years. And so we read books about that to try and help. And I realized that the man, I would go and get checked, it's one check. <laughs> you, you come and they just check the mobility and you know sperm count and you're okay. 
The woman is so many, many things they need to check. So which is more complicated? Obviously the woman's reproductive organ is more complicated. So the key, this is the key. True father and true mother each have unique areas of responsibility where they are in the subject partner position. Unshared. Some things they share, of course. You can exchange. Some things, they each have a unique position. So if we look at the tree of life and we say this represents true father, then the external victories that we might look at, father loved and honored his parents. He had a family of patriots, a fierce passion for goodness. He accepted Jesus' mission. He inherited Jesus' foundation. He discovered the divine principle. He found a true mother. He consecrated the holy blessing. He built a worldwide foundation. He has a never ever give up spirit and many more. The critique on communism, the VOC, the unification thought, so many things. And these are Father's accomplishments. He is the tree of life. Internally, in my mind, the greatest victory that true Father has is discovery of the divine principle. Remember we have 2,000 years of Christian theologians trying to understand. Libraries are filled with books trying to understand these fundamental concepts. And True Father did that. Wow! How could he do that? We know them, the dual characteristics, God, the reason God created human responsibility, existence, spirit world, the fall, etc., etc. Okay. What about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? What areas are unique? the true mother. So I'm not going to look at what true mother said and then get into the controversy that's there. I want to examine why true mother is saying what she is saying. Her heart. And my title today might actually be changed and this could be a good title, The Role and Responsibility of Perfected Eve as the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil. So there are five things that I look at in the Bible that are uniquely Eve's responsibility. Number one, Eve has two commandments. Now Adam has one, Eve has two. To Adam, God said, you must not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it you will die. But to Eve, God said, you must not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge that is in the middle, fruit, sorry, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it. Eve has two commandments. Don't eat and don't touch. Adam has one. I grew up in the military. The general has more responsibility and a higher position. <laughs> Someone with more responsibility in this area has a higher position. So why did God tell Eve you must not touch the fruit? Eve is the catalyst, the guardian of true conjugal love. In this area she is in the subject position. Ask any husband. Once you start touching <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I want to go all the way. So touching is the catalyst, touching is the gateway. And who's in charge of that? Eve. Adam and Eve have similar commandments, don't eat, but Eve don't touch. Don't, don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. Number two. The husband cleaves to his wife. Genesis 2.24 Therefore a man leaves his father and mother and will cleave to his wife and they will become one flesh. First of all, look at the singularity of this. A man cleaves to his wife. They're both one, not two. And there are three parts to this. Leave your father and mother, cleave to your wife, to become one flesh. That will be the next Sunday sermon. <laughs> but just to make it clear, leave does not mean say goodbye and find a different place to live as is traditionally thought in both Christian and Jewish texts. The baby leaves the womb and we can call it 
birth. You leave your alma mater and we can call it graduation. So what it means is that the, the son, the man, the children that are living with their parents graduate from this position of child and they get married. They become a spouse. I'll talk about this a little bit later. The wife is the subject position. The two become one flesh, conceive God's children and lineage. The man cleaves to the wife. The person who is blind would cling to a sighted person or a seeing eye dog that leads and takes the subject partner position. Since the man cleaves or clings to his wife and the woman is clung to, she leads. The woman leads. It's very clear. There's no other interpretation. In setting the standard of conjugal love in this marriage building, family building responsibility that Eve has, again we see the woman is in the subject partner position. Number three, Eve bears children. She is the fruited tree. So on the left, the tree of life. And on the right is the tree of what we may call love. I'll explain that a little bit later. But what I want to look at is Chan Sung Kyung. Father said this, the woman's love organ is the subject partner of all subject partners, for it controls the life of a man who is leading. Clearly the woman. Clearly the woman. Next, alone, man is not good. The Bible verse, Genesis 2.18, Therefore the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. All right, let's look at the second part of that. A helper fit for him. This, the helper fit for him does not mean someone to cook his meals, wash his clothes, and sweep the floor. She is not an unpaid servant. A helper fit for him means someone to help man be man. It's obvious that a man cannot be a husband without a wife and cannot be a father without a mother and children, which he cannot have alone. Let's look at the second part now. It is not good that man should be alone. Five reasons. Number one, man would be lonely. <laughs> no helper. Oh, well, that's a, that's a reason. Was this in God's heart? Yes, I think probably. It's unprincipled because everything else is created in pairs, so the pair system wouldn't exist. That's also true. And if there's no pair system, there's no lineage and no offspring and therefore no species. That's also true. The man needs help in social networking. How many within the, the married couples who remembers the birthdays? <laughs> the husband or the wife? Who makes the most conversation with your relatives? Well, just pick up the phone and call them. Husband or wife? Who creates the social networking that keeps those relationships alive? In my case, it's very clear. <laughs> I don't remember names of people. I'm even asking back there, is it Hori or Hori Hero? I don't know. I have to figure out this. Man needs help in social networking. And most importantly, most importantly, sexual desires are unregulated if man is alone. What does that mean? A man needs a wife to be the recipient of his sexual desires, thereby placing her in the subject partner position. For a man to control himself does not mean to totally suppress his libido. It means to channel his sexual desire in a constructive, positive, productive, and principled manner toward one woman, his wife. In this case, the woman is truly a helper fit for him, and for him alone. This is mutually exclusive relationship that God created. The role and responsibility of a perfected Eve, finally, knowledge of conjugal love. 
As we mentioned, and as we all know, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil represents a perfected Eve. What knowledge should Eve have? What knowledge should she balance between good and evil? Well, what is it? There is scientific knowledge, can be good or evil. There's financial knowledge, can be good or evil. There's nuclear knowledge that can be good or evil. What area of knowledge, the vast, we have lots of areas, does the woman have to be the expert in good or evil? What area is this in the women? Women alone conceive children in their womb. Women alone carry that child for nine months. Women alone give labor for hours at the risk of their life to give that child birth. They nurse the child for two years or more. In the realm of conjugal love and the subsequent outcome of conjugal love, childbearing, no one can doubt that our wives and mothers play the subject partner position. In the Bible, this is what it says. Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore a child. So the knowledge to know means to have a conjugal sexual relationship. So Eve is the tree of knowledge. What knowledge? Well, this knowledge. Where this word is used in Genesis 4, chapter 1. To know means to love. In a sexual sense. So we can say that the tree of knowledge of good and evil is really the tree of true love. And Let's look at what mother has done. We know there are four realms of heart. And let's look at them and compare Eve with true mother. Children's love. The knowledge of a daughter's love toward her father. Eve should have known her father, her heavenly parent. But I ask you, if you look at the Bible, go read chapter 1 and 2. This is very short. God was speaking to Adam. God was speaking to Eve. What did they say back? Did they say thank you? No. Eve had questions and that's fine. In fact, that's good. She asked the wrong guy and got the wrong answer. So, no communication. God was talking to his children. They were not talking back. You have, you have a cell phone? Hello, can you hear me? Hello. If there's no reply, hang up and try again. There's no communication. One way is not communication. So did Mother Eve do that? No. Did Mother? Yes. Mother grew up knowing God is my Father. We know that. We, we, we know her story. Even simply we know that. God was my Father. True Mother, sibling love. The sibling love or the sister love of Eve. Did Eve talk to her older brother? In the Bible we don't see it. She asked the archangel. Not her older brother. Who, her older brother had the same commandment as she. She should talk to him. They could work it out. No, let's talk to this guy. Archangel. Lucifer. The serpent. So we can say Eve didn't have this heart of conjugal or of siblings love. Did mother? Yes. Mother and her mother joined father's church after visiting other churches in the Seoul area at that time. They were amazed at Father's teachings. And they acknowledged Father in his messianic role. Conjugal love. We know that this was the problem. No, it didn't happen. Eve did not understand her rightful husband. Who would she ask? God. God would tell her. You don't ask? No answer. Silence. This is a lesson for parents. Actually, we just concluded a workshop, seven, six day workshop in the Philippines before I came here. 410 second generation only from the Asia Pacific area. And we emphasized, you need to talk to your parents. And we made kind of a condition at that time. Every night, the child would call and report to their parents, no matter what. I've never talked to my father for years. Okay, but you're gonna talk for five days, you're gonna talk to your father every day, or your mother. And then in the morning when you have your team meeting, share together. 
and some of your teammates will have really wonderful, easy conversations, learn from them and share the difficulty that you had that somebody might help you. Let's solve this fundamental problem of communication between parents and children in the family. It's key to protecting and saving our children. Parental love? No. Eve didn't understand whose lineage would be born from her womb. And the Bible says in Genesis, I think it's 3.15, I will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. Between your seed and his seed. So the fall of man, it was probably there was three trees in the Garden of Eden instead of two. There should have only been two trees. Eve was talking, really creating a third tree. It should have been two trees, one lineage. Now we have three trees and two lineages. That's the fall. That's the fall. But what is mother teaching us? Father has taught us importantly and rightly so that the fall involves sexual relationship. Absolutely true. And no one even thought of that. But what mother is saying, let's go a little bit deeper in this heart of filial piety, not just the, the obedience that is needed in filial love, but the artistic warmth and communication. And I'm learning in our family that this is probably something I need to learn even at this old age. They've got to treat, teach old dogs new tricks. They've got to do that. And I'm learning and trying to, trying to adjust accordingly. But mother has said, no, Hyojang. Everything she touches, name that Hyojang. This building, oh, name that Hyojang. This program, name that Hyojang. Uh, you can see that, right? Why is she doing that? Education. This is what she is trying to say. Yes, we need sexual purity, but there's something more important. If we just have the sexual purity, the children will feel judged and coerced and, 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 and almost, you know, imprisoned like that. I have no room to move, no, nothing. And mother saying, no, we need something more, something deeper to share with our children. The first workshop that mother had in Hawaii, uh, she invited Yananim to be the coordinator of the workshop. And Yananim went to mother and said, I, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> what should we do? Mother said, the, the title of this workshop, thank you and please. <laughs> 